And I just wanted to let you know that the students have been working really, really hard on reading their lines fluently. And Mrs. LeBlanc has been a big piece in this. A lot of what you see is from her house. <laughs> okay. This is the first play of the Native American Cinderella, a folk tale told from the Abenaki tribe of Eastern Canada. It is brought to you by Hootie Owl. On the shores of a wide bay near the Atlantic Ocean, and is now in, a, in a, what is now called Canada, there once lived a great Native American warrior. He was called Strongwind the Invisible. Strongwind, Strongwind lived with his sister in a wigwam near the sea. For a long time, he did not marry. It was known that Strongwind would marry the first maiden who could see him as he came home at night. Many tried, but Strongwind was a clever trick to test the truthfulness of all who sought to win. Curtain up. <laughs> I would like to have a family someday. I would like to have a wife and children of my own, and I will go with the fire to some cold nights. A family might be next, but you already have a wigwam. No. Go build a fire den for your colts. No, that's not what I mean. I want a wife. There are a lot of nice maidens in our village. They all seem to like you, but you didn't seem to like the ones that I brought to you before. But the woman in Mary must be an honest <laughs> woman. How do you expect me to figure out who is honest and who is not, brother? <laughs> you will help me. How can I help you? By helping me learn which man is honest and which one is not. You do want me to be happy, don't you? Of course I want you to be happy, but come on, you trust me, don't you? Oh, well, okay. Is this going to be hard? Not at all, sister. <laughs> Everyone who walks by the woodland will have to pass a test. I will stay right here, but I will make myself invisible. You know I am the only brave in the world who can do that. Ask you if she sees me by her answer, we will know that she's a truthful woman. I will marry the first honest woman who passes this wigwam. Okay, I see what you mean. The first woman, huh? What if she can't cook? I'll marry her. What if she can't bend your bucks? I'll marry her. Okay, brother, let's try this plan of yours. Look, here comes Featherbrain. Hi, Featherbrain. What's going on? Not much. I was just coming from the beach. I was fishing this morning. Nice catch. Hey, you like my brother, right? Um, he's just making the way he can make himself invisible. Ah, is he around? <laughs> you tell me. No, he has decided to marry the first girl who can see him, although he's invisible. I see him over there. He's wearing a blue bee in his hair. He's carrying a bear hide. What is he using to draw his sled? A pole. Right, Feather Braid. See you later. <laughs> Strongwind, I don't know about this idea of yours, but let's try it again. Here comes White Fox. Hey, White Fox, good to see you. What's in that basket? I was just picking corn to grind into flour. Tomorrow I will make it into bread for my family. How is your brother, the bravest warrior in our village? He's fine. Do oh, you know he's promised to marry the first maiden who sees him? Yes, there he is with the fishing pole. You were truly lucky to have a brother like that. What is he used to draw his sled? A great cord. <laughs> so that's where the cord went. See you later. <laughs> well, I don't know, Strongman. This is not going so well. There must be one honest woman in this village, and we are going to find her. Come on. Oh, you'll never guess what I'll have to tell you. Strongwind is looking for a bride. What? How do you know such a good sister? Has he chosen yet? When will he choose? How will he choose? I do not know, sister. I just heard this when I went to pick berries. Strongwind and his sister were talking about it, and they did not know they and they did not see me in the bushes. I could not hear how or what going to, but we should go talk with Strongwind's sister. She will know. We are the daughters of the great chief. We must choose one of us. That's the best news I've heard all season. But sister, we cannot go in these plain garments. We must make ourselves beautiful. We should take food to show that we can cook. And jewelry and baskets to, to show that we can make fun things. But neither of you can cook. My youngest daughter does the cooking in this wigwam, or we all starve. She also <laughs> makes the baskets and mends the clothes and makes the jewelry to trade. Get up, girl. You look a mess. It's a disgrace on my name to have such a mess of dollars. Look at your clothes. Father, we saw her rubbing ashes all over her face. <laughs> I think she likes to be dirty. 
That's not true, Father. They pushed me down and they rubbed ashes all over me. Do you expect me to believe such a silly story? What a thing to say about your sisters. One of you should marry strongly. You won't know that you cannot cook or mend clothing until after the wedding. By then it will be too late. He is such a great hunter that none of us will ever be hungry again. Go on then. Make yourselves as pretty as you can. You, for making yourself look so dirty, you will mend your sister's clothes so they will look as nice as possible. I want to seek strongly too. <laughs> you want to marry. Go now, quickly, before he chooses someone else. I will not give up. There must be an honest in this village. If I have to, I will go to another village. Oh, another village? But I'm so tired. Your idea does not seem to be working. We've already been through all the maidens of the village, haven't we? You who? Can I speak with you, O sister of my village? What's up, Dodger? I understand that your handsome brother, who is the bravest of the brave, is looking for a wife. Can this wonderful news be true? Yes, it's true. You look pretty nice today. Are you interested in being strong in this life? Yes, I would make the best wife. I can sing and dance, and I'm a very good cook. Just ask my father how I can cook. He's not a bad singer, really. <laughs>